Welcome to another exciting episode of Art Check, the home where we tackle issues environmental. My name is Anma Sherry and our focus today is on waste management. Yes, waste. Ecology, what do you mean? What do you understand by the name ecology? An ecology probably is a lodge that has no waste, recycles everything 365 days a year. And that's why I'm sitting down with William to tell us how exactly he operates and what examples of projects that he has in store for waste management. Many thanks, William, for Thank joining us. Thank you very us. much. Uh, I must admit, you still insist you have zero waste. You still recycle everything, 100% recycle. Yes, Let's focus do. on water mm -hmm. and waste water. How do you deal with your waste water? Um, for our waste water, we actually uh, treat all our black and grey water using um, uh, more or less a barn, natural way, uh, using plants, and the plants are indigenous to the Masai Mara. So just um, uh, to start with, we contracted a company called Aqua Inc, which is based in Nairobi. Um, and Aqua Inc have never gone out of Nairobi to do this project. So we were the first people to uh, buy the ideas and do this outside of Nairobi. So um, all the water, all the waste water are channeled into this lagoon, which a lagoon actually has um, indigenous plants from the Mara uh, floating on a plastic matrix. And uh, the water will go through the roots of these uh, plants and they purify and sanitize water, mm -hmm. and then pump back to the system or to actually another rather uh, cleaning system, which we use electrolyte charcoals to more purify and sanitize the water before it's being sent back to the system. Well, the first question I should have asked is the source of your water. Mm -hmm. Where do you source it from? Uh, we have a shallow well, which um, we dug. It's about 30 feet deep, and um, we get our fresh water here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Embo, Embo River does not count? No, uh, we actually along Talek River has Embo Camp, okay. and it doesn't count um, at all. And according to the statistic and research on Talek water, mm -hmm. uh, even it's more polluted than our wastewater. So it's not an option to go. All right, let's yeah. talk about pollution mm -hmm. because it's something that is really, you know, it's a, it's a disease, let's say, in most of our rivers. Mm -hmm. And uh, Talek, you said Embo River is kind of polluted. Mm -hmm. How, how what, what, what can we do about that? Uh, Talek River actually run across the Masai Mara ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, it takes tributaries as well that joins it, comes from far and wild. Uh, we have the community living along these rivers. Yeah. Um, we have the camps along these rivers. Not everyone actually looking into the eco and a natural way of doing things. So there's a lot of effluence. There's a lot of waste discharged into the river. And together with already polluted river by the wildlife, by the hippos, which they poop in the water and everything, uh, this actually contributing to a huge amount of um, pollution in the rivers. Mm -hmm. And Embo actually is looking into ways of trying to affect that. And this is why we have now this uh, water treatment system. Mm -hmm. And we don't leak anything into the river, despite that we are all along the river. Oh, yeah. So US is still zero. But we've talked about there some uh, establishments that you have, when, yeah. you know, the sewer system. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. So with our sewer system, we don't have the normal traditional septic tanks. Yeah. So what we have is the lagoons. And these lagoons actually has plants on them. These plants purify the water and the water will be used again. In the lagoons, we have the membranes that we put on the walls. So in fact, as we actually, we don't have the influent or we don't have to apply for influent discharge license mm -hmm. because we're not discharging any influence into the ground. Mm -hmm. So this water will go back into the system, meaning that uh, we will um, have our 90% of the water that we use in recirculation, and we only use like 10% mm -hmm. um, every day. And this is a closed loop system where we don't necessarily rely on, you know, outside inputs to operate in, in daily operation. So we operate within what we have. Within what you have. Yeah. And the plus the, the, the natural, uh, the plants and the, the, 
what of this partnership? Would you mind expounding on it about this aquatic bio biological integrated system? Yeah, so we looked on the wetlands of the Masai Mara and um, they already plants there in the water. And we looked on the scientific aspect of it. What are they doing in the water? Would there any contribution of cleaning and purifying the water? What if we apply the same? And exactly that is what the company that helped us to do the water treatment does. Mm -hmm. So they came here, they do research for about a month going into different wetlands and seeing which species of plants are in these wetlands. And what can we do to use the same plant to purify the water for a camp like ours? Mm -hmm. So um, this plant actually is uh, indigenous to here. And despite that the company come from elsewhere in the world, they do research and they found out that we can use the plants here in the Mara okay. to do exactly the same job that they wanted to do. But your treatment or your wastewater treatment is unlike the others, the mm. normal ones. Yeah. You have to have a water treatment plant, just like the Siwa mm. treatment mm. Uh, plant mm. in Rai. Mm. So you recycle water, you're, you're using plants, mm -hmm. let's say. Mm. Why did you decide to use plants? Uh, using plants is a bio thing. I mean, it's a biological uh, way of using exactly the same water but not having any chemical that will um, uh, damage or destroy anything, whether it will be fauna or flora. So we uh, looked at this um, um, way of using plants and we realized that is the, is once that, is, that option is, is, is uh, possible, mm -hmm. uh, is, is an option to go. I mean, mm -hmm. it's not like another. I mean, you can think if, if you'll be using chemicals or anything to do the purification and cleaning of the water, right. like the norm, it will be expensive and not eco-friendly. Right. Yeah. Again, I re really am asking this question because at the end of the day, people will uh, have different opinions. But at the end of the day, as long as uh, it's a system that works for you, mm -hmm. then that's better. But when we talk about Embo Camp and the local tourists and the tourists internationally mm -hmm. are still coming, mm -hmm. is it something you plan to uh, do at large scale levels, uh, the, the, the treatment? Yeah, we're looking on um, working on this system and probably actually extending it to the community and this is our key partnership you know having the community um, learn about this and learn about this sustainable development or sustainable new ways of development mm -hmm. and we partnered with friends of tamara and where we're looking at this is that we may actually spread this into the local schools uh into the clinics into the uh, the centers the urban centers that are adjacent to the national reserve and be able to um develop this with them and uh, make them understand this is a sustainable way to go mm -hmm. and not to discharge any influence into the rivers or into the streams. All right. Yeah. Uh, just your parting shot on your, you know, on your waist and uh, we want to know is it more cheaper, is it more expensive and how the impact it has on your political tourism agenda? It's, it's much cheaper. If you looked on the angle of being cheap, it's much cheaper. It might be a little bit more when you start it, but mm -hmm. for the long run, it's very cheap. All right. Yeah. And is it, is it, it's something that you really want to expand at Latkes, as you have said before. Yeah. But yeah. you're parting short on this. What will, you know, other companies are looking at you. You uh, know, if you've tried it, then I'm going to do it. Yeah. Um, a lot of people actually didn't know this exists. When we started, a lot of people are very much... Um, skeptical to look into it there was like you know really is this will work and um, they came here to see it and for us we actually jumped into it because we saw the pilot project in Nairobi uh, what Aquang is doing in Nairobi and we really liked it and we believe this is a good way to go but for everyone as usual there was like is it really work would this will work in a larger scale or even in the most scale they didn't think that it would work but oh. now they've already seen it it's working mm -hmm. and as we speak, Akwe actually is having projects now in the Mara. They've already finished one with um, uh, one community-based project, and they're doing now for the camps. All right. Many yeah. thanks, William, for Thank joining you very us. much. Yeah. Do appreciate. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, West, it's the first time I've seen mm -hmm. using plants, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm used to the normal, you know, the cemented one. Mm -hmm. But if it's this working, then I'm pretty sure it's something that we should all, you know, mm -hmm. do. Definitely it's working, and I think it's a good way to go for everyone. All right. Many yeah. thanks, William. Thank you very much. Now, when we talk about water management, it's not the water management system that you used to, but a system that uses plants to purify water. And that is what they're doing here at Embo Camp. Okay, now, um, these are, uh, the one you're holding is about three different types of plants. Yeah. Yeah, there's a uh, taifa, there's a cypress, and there's kana. Now, these plants are actually planted on a plastic matrix, this thing here. Mm -hmm. 
the, uh, the work for this uh, matrix is to make sure that the plants doesn't sink fully down into the ground, but it will float, but only the roots go through the matrix. Mm -hmm. And those roots are the one actually does the job. Those are the ones treat the water, because all this water goes through the roots, filtered, and uh, you know, all the bacteria actually being digested by the plants and then go through into the, um, into the manhole at the end over there. Right. So the plants are for purification and uh, a little bit of sanitation of water. Okay. Yeah. So this water, where it's from direct waste from kitchen, bathroom? Everywhere. All our water that we use in the camp, everywhere. Kitchen, bathroom, toilet, um, uh, staff area, you know, staff quarters, all that water comes here. We channel the water to, to, to be here. All right. Yeah. So the main, of the, the main reason why we're having this plant is basically just to purify water. To purify water, yes. And also sanitize the bacteria, most of the bacteria that are in the water, because that is their food as well. And you can see the growth, the very healthy plants. They need all of these nutrients from um, the water, uh, all the bacteria, so all the, the food waste that comes from the kitchen uh, and all the washing area. Uh, of course, you know, we use um, um, the organic uh, yeah. substances, organic soaps, so they don't kill the plants. So that is still um, nutrients to the plants as well. Are you not scared that the plants might overgrow and probably become a little bit heavier? Or no, no, because the matrix itself has that capacity to hold that um, oh, weight. Yeah. yeah, so they will not be too heavy. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can tell you, I don't know how to return this, but... I can return it, don't worry, I will put it back. Like that. Mm. That's it? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so that's, um, that's um, uh, what actually does, and I would like to explain the process of the water coming in. Yeah. Now, this, is, this manhole is more of a filtration. This is where any foreign object goes into a toilet will be actually trapped here. So it will not end up in the lagoon. And we clean it um, every time or every two months when we are busy. So the water only is filtered into the lagoon and um, you know the plants does the job and then we pumped from the other end into into the other uh, process uh, up there. So the process there is more of electrolyte charcoals where the water will go into this charcoal, it does more sanitation and purification before it actually goes into the final stage. Will you say that this water is black or grey? Uh, it's both. both. It's, yeah, because we have the water from the kitchen and we have from the toilet. Okay. When water is clean um, and ready to go to the next process, it comes into this manhole. So there's a pipe underneath that brings already clean and purified water from the, the lagoon into here. And then in this manhole, there's a pump. And um, this pump actually will pump the water here into the other system over there. So every time when the water actually almost coming up or filling up, we pump it into the other place. So from uh, the lagoons, we pump the water into these chambers here, and these are the electrolyte chambers. There are actually four of them, and the water starts from this end and go to the other end. And then when they're actually on the last end, that is when the water now is being pumped up to the tank. And this is when the water is ready. Okay. Yeah. So for how long? You know, when, when you mean water, you'll pump water uh, to the tanks. Do you pump it to the tanks, right? How yeah. many hours does that take? It uh, depends on how much water we actually pump in every lagoon mm -hmm. in, in each day. So when this is filled up, which no, normally actually it may take up to three days to fill up this, because we, we, we pump uh, which is already being cleaned from the lagoon, mm -hmm. uh, and then we pump it to here. So it will actually take maybe three days, and then pumping from here up to the tank may take one day. One day. Yeah. So from, the, from tanks right to... To the, to the tent, yeah. All right. Yeah. So, but we had not mentioned before the water, how you utilize the water. Mm -hmm. So would you mind mentioning that? Uh, yes. Um, I mean, if you look on our showers, they're actually slow. Um, they're actually slow showers. Uh, they're not like the big, um, uh, they still rain showers, but there's not really the big showers that waste a lot of water. Mm -hmm. So these showers actually will minimize the amount of water that will be used. And the same thing with the toilet. Toilet has two flush one long flush and the short flush. So we always advise people to use the short flush every time when they flush the toilet. Okay. Then the big flush if you need it. All right. Yeah. So I think that, that from that way now it goes back to the washrooms and yeah. uh, from here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then that water go back into, into the lagoon again. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So back to where it started. Yeah. yeah. So it's co the, to the contrary of what many people say. It's like be careful with water. So we need water for our plants and also to recycle back into the system. Mm -hmm. So we don't really mind if you use much water because that water is still coming back to us. Okay. Why 
you decided to start this initiative and how is it different? Why tree planting and how is it different? Um, tree planting actually, or tree themselves, actually are very good friends of the environment. So we looked into how are we going to offset the gases emission from the guests that we have coming in here and how can we help, what we can contribute into, into the environment, into the nature. So we looked on uh, having these indigenous trees planted in the camp and every guest that flies to our camp will plant two trees that will counter the um, gases emission that actually they will create when they fly from Nairobi to the Masai Mara. So out of our calculation, we come up to the um, conclusion that every guest that comes to us should plant two trees um, to offset that gas emission. Do these visitors um, pick the type of trees they'll plant or you're the people too? Uh, we are the one to pick the, the type of trees that we plant and this is because people are not really aware or they don't really know much about the trees here, indigenous trees here. So we plant and we prepare the trees ahead of the guests, otherwise it will be not that easy for them to pick any tree and be able to plant. Alright, mm. so how, may, how far, how, why did you decide to come up with this? Uh, again it goes into the, um, the eco friendly environment that um, we just uh, spoke about. So we looked at how we can help uh, in this. Uh, and the only way you can do this, you can actually reverse some of the things that are happening in the environment or some of the danger that we are um, exposing to the environment is planting back the trees. You know, having in mind that we clear a lot of trees even there before. So we kind of like now trying to go back and uh, recover what we already destroyed. All right. Yeah. And what is the main type of tree you'll find here? Um, we have a few um, trees that we have around here and we looked in some of the trees that actually will be uh, more faster helping in uh, carbon em uh, countering carbon emission and some of the trees that we looked at is acacia trees, uh, we have the croton trees, we have the embony trees, the giant ebony, which is the most dominant tree around this area. Mm -hmm. So these are the trees that we prepare on ground and they are ready for the guests to plant when they visit us. When they visit. Yeah. And uh, when we talk about calculations, how many trees that it does each guest plant? Two. So for the trip from Nairobi, which is about 200 and around 230 mm -hmm. um, miles um, um, to, to Masai Mara, um, they uh, have to plant two trees um, just to be able to um, reach, uh, according to our, our calculation, 310 um, kilogram of emission that um, the planes uh, or gases that the planes emit when they fly. Have you seen any significant uh, this planting the trees? In yeah, yeah. We, um, before, we actually did this project in another part of the Mara and um, I was, we were one of the people that started this and we planted over 3,000 sampling of trees and we see mm -hmm. the benefit, we see um, actually the recovery of some areas where um, forests were degraded and there was no trees at all and there's like two things that actually contributing into this. We are competing with wildlife and, and in our part we want to do that but the wildlife part is nature so. We hope that if we do our part, even nature will do his part. We can agree that this is a camp that will, or it is, uh, it does accommodate so many guests. Yeah. And uh, very few, in a few years, or uh, time, as time goes by, locals or international guests will be in huge amount. Mm -hmm. Do you plan to make sure that uh, the project, tree planting project that you have, goes large scale? Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, we do. We're looking in um, doing this, even going more uh, out of the Mara to other part of the of the of, of the county, mm -hmm. and be able to plant the trees on the right place, but not taking trees to some places where they are not suitable or they are not um, have to be. Uh, taking into consideration, these are the species that belong to the Mara. These are native species of trees. So we do first here in the Mara, and then. Going out of Tamara, we have to do research and make sure that we actually take into places where the trees occur naturally. All right. Mm -hmm. yes, when we were taking a tree, you talked about something to do. When a tree falls, you just let it mm -hmm. uh, be organic. Yeah. Why is that? Because many people will argue that's firewood. No, actually it's not that way. If you look on the trees, and always when you go around and lifting up dead trees, there's always some creatures underneath. Yeah. These are part of the wildlife. This is part of the ecosystem. These creatures are playing a vital role in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And the moment that we take that tree and we burn it as a fire, the moment we take that tree and we use it for building, you displace so much of these creatures, which no one actually is looking very much into it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we actually uh, looked at it and we thought that um, we should actually play a different role to make sure that they, um, they survive. Mm -hmm.
because there's so much things that are doing to the environment that we are not aware of. But for sure, it's part of the collective thing that is making this ecosystem look nice. All right, many thanks, William, for joining thank us. You very I do much. appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, I'm sure our viewers and also we've been, uh, we appreciate the knowledge you've shared. Thank you very much for coming. Well, I hope you've learned something in today's episode. As I've always told you, if you really want to make an impact, find your bro. My name is Anne Masheri. Until next time, stay tuned.